Hello class. Um, in this video, I'll be discussing about electric field calculation for a ring of charge. Okay. So the problem goes like this. A thin ring of radius R is uniformly charged with a total charge of Q. Okay. So take note of the, uh, the idealizations in, that, that, in, that are done in the problem. So you have a thin ring, thin ring, and then the charge of the ring is uniform, uniformly charged, and then the total charge is Q. So what are the implications for this? Uh, if the problem says that it's a thin ring, the author wants to remind you that the ring has no thickness. So it's like they call it a mathematical ring because in real, in real life, if it's a ring, it really has, a, it's a three-dimensional object. But a, a mathematical uh, ring, pag sinabing thin, it, its uh, thickness is negligible. Okay? So somehow, it just acts like a two-dimensional object. No? It has length and width, but the thickness is very minimal. So, yun siya. So, that's a thin ring, no thickness. Uniformly charged, it means that the charge density is constant. So, even if you slice at any portion of the ring, you'd still get the same charge density. For, for this ring, since it has no, uh, since it's just thin, so it, we can actually consider it as if it's a line charge, but it is just bent to form into a circle or it is a line charge that is wrapped on a circle. So you, you imagine it like that. So since it's just like a line charge that is bent into a circle, then we still say that uh, the length of this charge, so if we say, um, uh, yeah, ring of charge, no? So let's identify some variables here. The radius of the ring is uh, R. So when you are uh, solving no, uh, problems that do not involve numerical values, everything is in, in variables, then you have to be very careful in the label, uh, in the labeling of the variable. So the, the thin ring here has capital R for its radius. And then the total charge is Q. So total charge is Q. Yan. And then uniformly charged. We consider this as if it is a line charge that is uh, bent into a circle. So in the previous video, we already know, uh, uh, we showed or we we discussed about how to determine the line charge. Tama ba? So... Uh, the strategies that we did in determining the, the electric field of a line charge would somehow be similar. But there's a point here that is uh, somehow different and simpler compared to the previous uh, excuse me, calculation that we have. Okay. But uh, first step, we choose our coordinates. And then second step, we choose, we divide the... the the continuous charge distribution into smaller segments and then treat each segment as if it's a point charge. Okay? And then we will uh, uh, establish an equation for each line segment and then we will sum up everything. So uh, let's choose our uh, coordinate uh, axis first. We say that the ring is on the plane of the xy. On the xy plane. So we take this, say for example, as our x, the axis that is perpendicular to our monitor, and then we take the vertical as the y, and then the horizontal, we take it as the, the z axis. Okay. After establishing your coordinates, we are to determine this time the electric field at a point on the axis of the ring. So this is another idealization. We are only focusing on electric field calculation that is called on axis. So when we say on axis for a ring, the axis of rotation of a ring, for example, no, not axis of rotation, axis due to its symmetry is a line that cuts through the center. 
Okay, para sa symmetry niya. Uh, okay, ayan. So, on axis, the electric field. So, say for example, that point, we call that point as point P. So, we are to determine, therefore, what is the electric field of the ring of charge at point P. And that is on axis. It means that the point of evaluation is along the axis that cuts through the, the, the point of symmetry of our, of our object here. The shape is already a simple circle, the ring. So, okay na tayo dyan. So, you've established your axis. You already know uh, where the point of evaluation is. So, now we are ready to divide our uh, ring into segments. So, this is still the same steps that we, we use in determining the electric field due to point charge. So, I will divide this into small segments. Yan. Okay. So, since the total charge of the ring is capital Q, then each segment here will carry a charge that is just part of Q. So, we will say that each segment of the ith particle, okay, so we already divided it now, each small segment carries a small charge and we'll call the charge as delta Q. So, say for example, I will... Uh, after dividing the, the, the uh, distribution into segments, you choose a segment in that, uh, in that continuous charge distribution and treat it like it's a point charge. Okay? So again, for electric field calculation, we are using two principles. Number one, the definition of electric field magnitude. We have K or 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. And then you have the... Uh, absolute value of your charge okay over the square of the diff square of the distance and then the other one is the principle of superposition yeah so we we'll use superposition okay i want to choose this segment here i will call it as my ith particle if you consider it as an ith particle, then it is still a countable or discrete particle. It's not yet continuous. So if it's countable, then we use the summation pa, di ba? So take note of that. Kung, kasi itong problem na ito, sometimes kasi you do not need to transition into integral calculus. Kasi baka naman you can do that using the ordinary summation. Okay. So the ith particle now is carrying a charge that is just a small part of the total charge. So we call it delta Q. Okay. After choosing the ith particle, take note this is positive charge yan ha. This carries positive yan. So after choosing the segment that you'd like to focus on, then you show the electric field vector at point P because of that ith particle. Okay. So, using the, the concept we learned about electric field, we simply connect the line, the imaginary line that connects them. So, along this line, this is already a 3D, three-dimensional na ito. But I cannot draw it that much uh, on a 2D plane. So, you have to use your imagination. Okay? Uh, ayan. It, the segment is on the XY plane. But this line here now is already approaching the third axis. So this is already a three-dimensional uh, line, okay? So, but you see it in the monitor as if it's just 2D. So be careful, ayan. So at this point, we know that this is a positive particle, positive charge. So at this point, the, the direction of its electric field would be along this line and then away. Kasi nga, positive yan. So, it will be somewhat like this. I want it to be in color blue. Uh, red na lang. So, this would be... Ay, bangit, bangit. Let me draw it again. Okay. More or less. So, this is now the electric field vector. Okay, as we sketch. Of this ith particle. So, I will label this as the electric field of the ith particle. It, this vector, this red arrow, is a three 
three-dimensional vector yan siya. Okay. So, uh, we use the concept of symmetry. Symmetry. Why symmetry? So that it will make our calculation simpler because by symmetry, there will be components that will cancel out no? if you use symmetry. Yan. By the way, ito pala yung answer no? na dapat nating ma-derive. So this is the answer. I hope we arrive at that equation. Okay. So since we want to use the, the principle of symmetry, then I will also identify the opposite charge here, opposite segment here, ith particle. Same distance pa rin yan siya. Actually, at any segment here, uh, by the way, I'm sorry. So this distance here from the source charge to the point charge, this is now the definition of our R sub I. It's the distance between ith particle and point P. Yan. So, I will look another counterpart of this and that would be this bottom segment here. R din yan siya, of course. And then, um, I will also sketch the electric field here of this charge. The opposite of the charge at taas. And then, it will have same magnitude electric field but in the opposite direction. So, this is now electric field I pa rin yan siya. Kaya lang going siya in the other other direction. Now, let's identify the angle here. So, from the origin, from the center of the ring, before I forget, to the P, we will call this, this is a certain distance Z. Diba? Kay Z axis man ito siya. Ayan. So, Z is defined as the distance between the center of the ring and the point of evaluation. Yung point P natin. Ayan. So, I would say that this angle here, from the axis going there, I'll call this as the angle of the ith particle E, e uh, field of the ith particle. And since these are two intersecting lines, okay, then the opposite angle here is also theta sub i. We need that in our substitution later. Okay, now let's continue. By symmetry, let's determine now the components of E sub I dito sa taas at saka E sub I sa baba. Now, um, so this is 3D, no? Uh, what happens here is this. I hope I will, I can draw it correctly. So, um, along the, the x-axis, it's like... It's like, if I draw the components of E sub I, I have a little e, uh, X component here going towards positive X because let's say I'll be sketching here a line that is parallel to X and this is Y. So I'm making now another Cartesian plane here sa, sa P natin. This blue arrow here is the X component of this E sub I sa baba. And I will sketch now. It goes somewhere here. This is now the Y component of the ith particle E. And then there is this uh, E sub I Z component. Ito, this is E I Y. And then this one here is E I X. So, if I will also sketch the head to tail of the components of EI, I'll draw it in black. So, from the point P, I'll go, I'll go a little same length as this one. So, this is also the EIX but going towards negative X. I have an upward EIY and then another... E, I, Z component. So in this case, since the E sub I magnitude and the, the, the red arrow here has the same magnitude, then the E, I, X towards positive is cancelled by the E, I, X negative here. So the total, therefore, we say the summation of the E sub I, X is zero. If we add na all the segments later, okay? What about the Y? 
you have EY going up, but this one is going down. Negative. So this gets cancelled, and this is cancelled. Then by symmetry, we are saying that E, I, Y component is also zero. What is left R is R. <laughs> what is R? What are left are the two components of the Z. You have this one and you have this one. So therefore, we say that the summation of the Z component of all the EIs EIs because of all the segments here, that will now be equivalent to the electric field of the ring at point P. So, ito ngayon ang hahanapin natin. We will establish an equation for E sub I Z so that we can have something to sum up on. Okay. So, ayan na. Diyan na ngayon tayo mag-start ngayon. So, after mo nang na-establish ang lahat, we now go to the establishment of the equation for EIZ. Okay. So, first step, let's establish muna the equation for the vector EI muna. Magnitude na lang muna tayo. Kasi klaro naman dito na going siya towards positive Z. Yan. Silang lahat na segments dito papuntang positive Z yan. So, focusing on the magnitude first, I want to determine the equation for E sub I. E sub I is just easy because this is due to a point charge. Itong segment natin dito na nag act as if it's a point charge. So, we know the electric field of a point charge from a certain distance from it. It's just the electrical constant 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. And then, what's the charge of this segment? The charge is delta Q. Okay? I'm talking about the field of one segment pa lang ha, kasi hindi pa tayo nagsasum up. Over the distance uh, between these two points, so that's R sub I squared. Okay. So if you look at the figure here, I can say that the height is R, and this hypotenuse is the R sub I. If you look at the, this triangle here, oh, sa taas nito ng circle. I'm just rewriting it in smaller portion, smaller scale. This is theta sub i and this is z. So that the hypotenuse r sub i is just the square root of z squared plus r squared. And then if I will square r sub i, so squaring this gets rid of the Radical. So, this will just become z squared plus r squared. I will substitute this here. So, this becomes 1, 4 pi epsilon sub naught. You still have your delta Q here. Over z squared plus uh, r squared. And then, no more square. Kasi ito na siya. Sorry, square na pala yan. Ayan. Okay? So, this is now our equation for E sub I. Ito siya. Let me encircle it. E sub I. Our next, oops. <laughs> our next goal is just to determine its Z component. Kasi yan yung buong vector. That is the whole red arrow that we have here. Oh, ito siya. Ayan. Ito yan. Magnitude niya yan. Okay? Now, let's go to the second one. Our uh, we want to get the, the Z component oh, dito. So, step 2 natin. We now establish EIZ. So, from the from another uh, triangle, you go to this triangle where the raised red line is the vector, the hypotenuse. So, you have your hypotenuse somewhere here. This is your E sub I. And then this one is your E I Z component. And then you have your another component somewhere here. Yeah. Uh, let's see, ano bang component ito? Uh, nasa Y. Hindi na natin napakita yung X. So let's just say this is E sub I Y. And then, wait ha, meron siyang x, y, z. 
So, ito parang ganito siya, oh. Pero ang ipapakita lang natin, kasi ito lang yung gusto natin na angle, oh. Ito. Kaya ang reflection ni Z, lagay ko dito, ito sa taas. Okay? Something like that. Tulad ng thickness along the X ito. So, this one is theta sub I. Therefore, EIZ is adjacent to theta I. So, we say that, so from that, the EI, getting this segment here, we say that EIZ component, magnitude tayo, is equal to uh, EI, the hypotenuse, and then the cosine of theta I. But si theta dito, we have to uh, express theta in terms of coordinates. No? So, lagay muna natin si E sub I. E sub I from equation 1 is 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught delta Q over Z squared plus R squared. And then your cosine theta I from this one, ah, balik tayo dito pala kasi coordinates pala yung gusto ko, no? hindi yung E I. So, si theta, if we go back here, the cosine of theta i, in terms of coordinates, adjacent is z over hypotenuse r sub i. Tama ba? So, cosine is opposite over hypotenuse. Tama. And then, si r sub i, so, cosine theta, r sub i is square root of z squared plus r squared. Let me write it in rational exponent, one half. So, ito ngayon ang ilalagay ko for cosine theta. I'll write it here as z over z squared plus r squared raised to one half. And then we can further simplify. Uh, we just add the exponent here, one plus one half. So, this becomes one 4 pi epsilon sub naught, delta Q, and then you have Z over Z squared plus R squared. 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves. Ayan. Now, let's take a look. Let's decide if there is a need to trans transition into uh, calculus. Let's check what are the constants here. 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught is a constant. The z is a constant. If you look at the, the figure, oh, sorry. If you look at the figure, guys, at any segment that we have here, that segment will always be, uh, uh, how did on? The Z value of all segment here, of each segment here, will always be the same. It will not change, no? The same thing is true with the R. So, in this case, uh, this, this is constant. Z is constant. And then, R is constant. So, we take it out of the summation ngayon, yung lahat ng constants natin, ang matitira na, na isa sum up natin, yung Q na lang. So, we say that if we sum up now all the E sub I Z magnitude, then we take out the constant out of the summation symbol, and then we have Z over Z squared plus R squared three halves, and then what is left to be summed up, summed up is delta Q. So in the entire ring, okay, if you get, if this is delta Q and you want to sum up all the Q, diba the total is just Q itself, the total Q? So the summation of the delta Q can be determined na immediately as Q. So, there's no need to go to transition to calculus. Kasi we are able naman to sum it up without calculus. So, in other words, the therefore, we can say now that the summation of all the EIZ as a vector, positive man yan lahat. So, we have 1 
over 4 pi epsilon sub naught z over z squared plus r squared 3 halves. And then delta q summation is just big Q. Okay? So this is going a positive z. So in our final answer, since we say that this is equivalent now to to na pala yung therefore natin. The electric field of the ring on axis at P is equivalent to you have positive 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught Z Q over Z squared plus R squared 3 halves going towards positive K. Did we get the correct answer? Let's take a look at the answer sa taas. Let's copy this. Copy. And then let's move this up. Paste it here. There. Okay. Ayan. So, uh, hindi niya sinulat dito si K hat. K hat. Ayan, nasa na yun? K hat. Because you already have here the Z component and then a positive shot. So it's still the same. Correct pa rin siya. So if, you, if there is a problem that asks for uh, on-axis electric field due to a ring of charge, then you can immediately use this. Okay? Now, so in other words, itong ring natin pala dito, we know that Along the line that cuts through, passes through its axis, the electric field due to this ring of charge at any point within this ring would be always towards this positive axis here. That's the electric field vector. So if we go to the other side of same distance Z pa rin from the center, then here it will also be away. That's the electric field. Kasi this is a positive charge. Okay? Can you get that? Now, um, let's see the implications if we set some limits. So what happens if you want to calculate the electric field of this ring, but at a very far point, on axis pa rin. Pero let's say, andito na point na ito, point P. So in this case, from the center... Going to this one, this is your Z, which is much, much greater than the radius, radius of the ring. So that's case number one for different cases that we'll talk about. Case number one, what if the calculation is so far from the, the ring? So from this equation here, this R will be essentially zero. So, ang matitira dito sa baba will have Z cube. So, this Z sa taas makancel, ito magiging 2. So, the electric field ngayon of the ring at this case will become 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And then, you have your charge. And then, Z squared here, which is also... Uh, pwede na rin natin sabihin R squared. So, if you notice, 1, ha 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught Q over R squared, the ring now is seen to behave like a point charge. As if it's a point charge. Kasi if you are calculating at a very far point, the ring will just look as if it's a point charge. You have your point charge Q and then you want to determine it from here going here. And that's equal to your Z. So at this point, then the electric field will simply be away pa rin. Okay? And then it's just like uh, KQ over R squared. So correct pa rin siya. Therefore, we say that the, the equation here is correct. Now, another case. Case number two. 
I'm almost done class. Medyo mahaba talaga ang, mga, ang pag-solve ng mga problem na ito, no? So, in case number two, what if... What is the electric field at the center? So, what if Z is zero? So, that is at the center of the ring. Center of ring. So, at the center of the ring, then this becomes zero. Itong Z dito, zero times any number is zero. So, the electric field of the ring at the center of the ring is zero. Why do you think electric field at the center of the ring is zero? Bakit kaya? So, if you have our ring here, yan, ring natin, uy. <laughs> if you have your ring there, so, say for example, uh, at the center man of calculation, so, kung kukuha ako ng segment dito, positive kunyari siya na ring, uh, the electric field of this segment sa taas is away. Pero if I get the same uh, point here, that will have an electric field going there. So, magka-cancel sila. Kung ito naman na uh, segment ang kukunin ko, the electric field at the center is going there. And then if I get another ring up segment at the side, maka-cancel pa rin siya dito. So, the same thing here. Yan. Cancel, cancel. Kaya, at the center, it's really zero. Diba? Kasi everything gets cancelled. Yan. Now, um, finally, we have um, for, for case number three, where the Z is equal to R. So, in that case, we have your, oops, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Ayaw na niya. <laughs> Pangit, okay. So, if this is R, this, this length is R. And if I want my, somewhere here, Z. So, gagawa tayo dito dyan na we want to determine the field. So, this is still on axis pa rin. Kaya we know that the field is in this direction pa rin, the electric field, no? But if we look at the, the equation, okay, merang graph na binigay dyan. Uh, we say here, therefore, that the electric field at where Z is equal to R, the ring. So, if we take all the Z as equal to R, then we have 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. Diba meron tayong Z, Q, and then you have Z squared, R squared, 3 halves. Okay? So, if we have everything in terms of r pareho sila so oops. sorry so if this is also r and this is also r then this becomes 2r 2r squared tapos meron kang 3 halves so magiging uh 2, 3 halves, and then r cube. Tapos makancel ito, magiging r squared. Ito mawawala. So we have 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught q over square root of 8, no? Square root of 2 cube r squared. Something like that. So if we at R, ayan. So, we say that at if the Z is, is equal to R, there's a graph. Wait, let me paste the graph for this one. Where is that? Ayan. So, the graph... Ayan. Okay. So, siya ngayon. Oops. Oops. Okay. So, if you look at the graph now, there is, if it's a ring, uh, 
there are values of Z where the electric field is maximum. And that is around this one, somewhere here. When Z is equal to R, ito siya na nag-peak tayo, nagmamax ang electric field. So, pinakamalakas. Kaya, um, the ring here sa taas, for example, if this is the R, this long ang R, then from here going here is the Z. Then at this point, this is where the field is maximum. Yan yung longest arrow. And then beyond that, the arrow, the, the electric field vector gets shorter and shorter. So, nag-weekend siya. The same thing doon sa kabila. Okay? So, uh, that is why you have the peak here. Dito din. Negative R. Maximum din yan in the opposite direction. So, this is true for positive and negative ring of charges. And then, nag, mag asymptote siya dyan. So, it gets closer and closer to zero as Z becomes farther and farther. Yeah. So, in other words, we know now that for a ring of charge, let me erase this. Okay? For a ring of charge, the electric field is zero at the center. And then at a certain distance, Z from the center, this is still on axis, ha? On axis lang ito. Pag hindi na along the axis yung point, let's say somewhere here, this is no longer true, ha? Yan. So, the shorter the arrow, the weaker the field strength. Ito yung pinaka maximum dito. At saka ito. Kasi ito yung point na uh, ang Z distance equals sa R. Pag greater na sa R, pahina ng pahina na din ang field. So, that's for the, uh, I think that would be all. Medyo mahaba na ang, this, ang video na ito. Okay? So, in the next video, I will be talking about electric field calculation for a disk. So, si disk naman is like several rings para mag-form siya into a disk. Okay? I think I have to stop here and then I'll see you later.